Okay, so here we go. Are we are recording now. Yes, perfect. So again, I will just say welcome to everyone because I wasn't recording and I was talking. <laughs> we were just talking about the great technology that we've got here, but we will get into that um, as we get further into the webinar here. Hopefully the slides are visible um, and we wanna make sure that we can still see comments and everything like that without uh, absorbing too much space with, uh, with the slides. So here we are, healing with microcurrent. And you're gonna see a lot of healing with microcurrent in some of these slides. Some very incredible changes um, and, and positive uh, reactions that I think a lot of people would, would miss out on if they were in these situations alone, right? right. So we'll see some overwhelming changes. And uh, we're definitely past starting time now, so I won't hold this up any further. So, if you've attended any webinar like this before, this beginning part is going to, to kind of resonate with you and you probably have heard it before, but stick with us, okay? So in this webinar, this is what we're gonna show you. We're gonna show you why systems and techniques that are out there already are not resolving the issue that you have, and we're gonna show you a system that will. And in this case, not only is the system effective, but it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Okay, well, that's important to us because we're in the healing field. Um, and so making you give up your arm and leg would, would, would be a, <laughs> it's little, not advisable, it's a, it's a really. little counterproductive. Yeah, absolutely. So who are we and why should you care to listen to us? So we are the Pain Free for Life team and uh, we're all related. So there you go. Yeah. We're family. We're family. We're family. Hey, we are. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> So you may not have actually seen all three of us together on a webinar like this before. Um, usually I'm in the background doing the technical uh, chatting with people and making sure everything runs smoothly, but I wanted to appear here today. So I'm, I'm Rob Van Bergen, see my name on the, on the list there. And uh, we have uh, John here, Dr. John Hache and Dr. Laurie Hache. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm hoping I won't uh, take the microphone too much, but I talk a lot. So oh, that's okay. Yeah, you'll have to we'll shut you up when we need to. <laughs> yeah. So they'll they'll keep me on on track here as well. So I don't want to get bogged down in in what we do too much, but in essence, we want to help everyone out there that is experiencing chronic pain, not just chronic pain, but you know, autoimmune disease, uh, degeneration, you, you name it. You're going to see some stuff here today. Uh, that'll sort of tell you a little bit more about where we go and why we do it and how pain isn't just pain. There's a lot more to that, right? We have the HASHA protocol for that reason. You will notice that inflammation, for example, carries redness, heat, swelling, and pain. pain. Mm -hmm. So pain, pain is a signal that there's something wrong, there's something that's going on. Uh, but but um, pain is also associated with just about every every time that you have the redness, the heat, the swelling. You've got some pain. You've got inflammation. You're going to have pain. Mm. And so pain means that your your brain is communicating with you, saying, "Fix me," because mm -hmm. nothing. I need some outside help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of the time, what do we do when I, when we're in pain? We push that away. We chase it away. We well, just, we chase the way, we, we, we cut the wires, we take uh, Tylenol, we take Advil, we take any medication, we take cortisone, mm -hmm. we, have to, we, take, we take the heavy stuff. Yeah. Uh, that, that doesn't do anybody any good as we've seen in the last couple of, in the last year anyway. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so, so our mission is to provide you with options that do not require you to just cut the wires. So that you're, we're not asking you to do damage to your body in order to fix the problems in it because your body totally can heal itself and it just needs to be given a little bit of assistance. And the, the question you always should be asking yourself, if, if God made you, created you to be self-healing. Mm -hmm. why, why are you are not you, healing? Why yeah. are you not healing? Yeah, I mean, biologically that's it, right? We are, we are designed to heal. Um, and if we are not healing, there's something impeding that. There's some impedance and we need to knock that barrier down. Mm -hmm. So our promise to you is by the end of this webinar, you will know our reasoning, our methodology, what you need to do to actually eliminate the inflammation and get yourself on track to resolve your chronic disease, illness, or pain. We are not talking about covering it up. We're talking about resolving it. 
And if you have not yet found the route to resolve your chronic pain, it's possible to find it. It's just you're not looking in the right place. And right now, it's very, very important because we're seeing uh, um, yeah, on an international scale uh, where we're seeing a collapse of a collective immune response. Yeah. And as that immune response goes through the fear and desperation, we're going to see uh, we're going to see people are going to start to get really sick in a hurry. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, this is one of the, the reasons I think people get sick, right? <laughs> well, they get sick because they're in fear and desperation. And when you're in fear and desperation, when you're in fight or flight, you do not heal. Mm -hmm. You don't take that time. Yeah. You go into anguish and anxiety and all of the other things. You can't sleep right. The whole thing starts to collapse on you. Well, and it all works together, yeah. right? You, the, you stop. I hate the paradox of it, honestly. You, you get pain. The pain, well, you get anxiety that can trigger your fight or flight, which creates the inflammation. The inflammation creates the pain. The pain is so uncomfortable and ruins your life that it creates more anxiety because you're a hard time sleeping. And before you know it, you're, you're a mess. You're a mess. You're right <laughs> back around again. And it's because this one little piece of the puzzle doesn't fit, right? Exactly. And, and so you're just trying to squeeze it all in. But when you go to your doctor, you are you're not given that sort of feel. They don't say to you, all right, John, but maybe, you know, what, what sort of stresses are going on in your life? They say, mm, yes, those hands there, they look really, really swollen and they hurt. Let me give you some drugs for that. Yeah, we, <laughs> we you write your say, cortisone. Mm -hmm. we, we've, got, we've got all kinds of good stuff going on that yeah. will modify the, 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 the disease response. Absolutely. Or heal you. you. No. <laughs> it, you'd be able to degenerate in peace. Absolutely. That's, that's the whole thing. So, so when, you, when you're a person, I'm sure anyone here that's in pain, anyone that's watching, if you suffer from chronic pain, illness, or disease, you've probably been told that you need to take medications, or that you need surgical intervention, or that you're crazy, and that there's nothing that can be done for you. And I've, I, unfortunately, that happens. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, you're, the next step is a referral to a psychologist to learn to mentally manage your pain. If you, you know, if today, uh, in today's world, in today's medical world, if you're not on some kind of medication, then, then there's something wrong with you. Yeah, and, and you can ask, uh, I mean, you see it in high schools too, right? You, you can line up the kids and probably every 10 kids, nine of them are on some sort of medication, whether it be for depression or anxiety. Right. And I mean, like Ritalin and that sort of thing. Yeah, ADHD. There's some sort of medication that's given because we're taught that there's something wrong with us. And the only way to fix that is a pill. Is a pill. Mm -hmm. But that pill doesn't fix, it covers up. Right. And then they and, give you another pill. And then they give you another pill. And I mean, here, this is it, right? This pill will fix you up. And, and the thing <laughs> is, is, it's like we've said before, there is no such thing as a pill that can resolve disease. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. They can put you on a medication and that medication can resolve your problem or maybe your inflammation goes away. You've got your flexibility back, but in three months time, they can no longer give you that medication because it's too dangerous. Or if they can, they have to increase the dose and then they have to increase it again and so on and so forth until you can't take it anymore. And like you said, you need a pill to Not fix the damage that's being done by the pill you took. And so you end up with this regimen of, of crazy amounts of pills that just mask the problem. And as you say, we've said on the slide here, allow you to degenerate in peace. And that's, that's really it, right? It's just- Where does it hurt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let, us, let, us, let us put that fire out for you so that you don't feel it. Yeah. Yeah, and no, we won't look at the causal factor, we just look at the pain. Yeah, exactly. And, and so this is it, right? This is what the pill actually does. The good is that it lessens your pain and discomfort. The bad is that it shortens your lifespan. It numbs your body to the existence of a problem. So it doesn't think it needs to fix it anymore. It comes with different side effects, depending on the drug, a lot of gastrointestinal issues. Um, you could get stomach ulcers from a lot of them. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and some of the things stuff, you know, it's really, really gets me is that a lot of the side effects aren't even on those detailed lists of side effects. They're not anything your doctor will run by you. 
but there's things like antidepressants and the withdrawal mm. of them. They don't, they expect you to be on antidepressants for a short period of time, but the withdrawal from antidepressants is like coming off of heroin. Your brain needs that, that fix. And you know, it, it's hard. So the side effects that are not listed on top of those that are, and then there's the impact on your organ function and that, you know, Tylenol. I mean, what does that do to your, your guts? Well, the reason why they, they came out with more advanced medication and COX inhibitors, so on and so forth, was because of the damage that was being done to your gut. Yeah. And then they only to find out that the COX inhibitors were creating heart disease. People were having heart attacks left and right and center. But is there a pill to deal with the, the heart stuff too? Well, well there's pills for everything. <laughs> so there's gotta be there's gotta be some secondary medication that will even maybe make it a little bit worse, but yeah, but make you feel better. Yeah. But then you see the advertisements, don't you, on the television and it says uh, in kidney disease and death. Yeah. That's like, yeah, and that's and that's it, right? Like you get that long this is you get all these pictures of it's gonna of make you happy and, and you're skipping and... through a field and all of that stuff is great. Uh, may cause death, diarrhea. And they're so quick, aren't they, when they, they and read they that. Across, and, yeah. and, and I love the bit at the end when it says, and death. Yeah. And then it's dead, it's closed. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, yeah. just like the person. Ask your, yeah. doctor, ask your doctor if this is right for you, right? Yeah. I mean, of course it's going to be right for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and especially in the case of where it puts money in their, in their pocket, which unfortunately does happen in some places in the this world. Is Certain yeah. people's favorite slides. Mm -hmm. This is, yeah, this yeah. is pretty cool. I, I mean, this, this is the other thing, right? Like, the, we put up the slide here, surgery is the only option, but the, the doctor extracting that money from you there, it, it comes in so many different forms, where that comes from, and it's an ongoing cost of, of these things. I know um, I was speaking to some people uh, today who were saying that the medication bills alone for some of the clients they see, um, <laughs> and this is in Canada, so I don't think it's quite as expensive here, uh, up in the twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year for pills, prescription pills. Um, and in these are, they, they make these pills essential for quality of life. Yeah, but what they don't do is when they keep adding another pill, they don't check whether there's side effects mm -hmm. from the pill that they've got from three times down the line, you know, so. Yeah, no, not at all. They just keep going. And uh, yeah, by the time you're 50 or 60 years old, you're expected uh, to you be have these so boxes yeah. now with, yeah. with compartments. So you, if you don't have 12 different pills in each of those Monday to Sunday boxes, <laughs> then you're, you're failing somewhere along the line. Yeah. yeah, you just don't have the right box. No, yeah. <laughs> And we, I mean, we laugh about it, guys. Um, we try to make light of the, these sorts of things, but it's not really funny. No. I mean, it's, it's actually dreadful. And, and this is the surgery option here too, right? Whether it's for profit or for that quick fix, surgery is becoming an increasingly popular solution for pain. And I'm seeing it in a lot of elderly patients as well. You know, they'll call and they'll say, well, my entire family is pushing me to get this hip replacement. Um, I started with hip pain about three months ago, and now the doctor's saying, well, maybe you should just get a hip replacement. Yeah, bone um, on bone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bone on yeah, bone. bone on bone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bone on bone. I know one fellow, and I think he's only in his late 30s, or early 40s, and I think he's in, the, he's in the Hall of Fame as a baseball player. Right. And the, and the amount of, of uh, operation surgeries, what was it, somewhere around close to 50? I think it was close to 50. Now, how can you justify 50 surgeries if not because the fellow had a fair amount of money? Mm -hmm. it, yeah, because no one else would be able to afford them. No. And, and you wouldn't, you know, people seem more willing to have the hip replacement surgeries, but I think it's because it's, a lot of the time, I think it's because it's on the inside. And if you would, if I were to come to you and say, John, I want to do a hand replacement surgery on you, you would be a lot more reticent than that than if I were to want to cut something out and replace it on the inside. I would think you would be kind of like, uh, no, I'm not giving up my hand. Um, why would you give up your hip? Why would you give up your hip? Yeah, right. Well, because you have the reason why you have you need a hip replacement and the other one is fine. It's almost like when you go sit, and this guy goes to see the doctor and he says, I got this pain in my left knee. And the doctor says, well, how old are you? Yeah, right. 
And, and the guy said, well, I'm, I'm 55. He said, well, you have to think about your age. He said, but the other knee is just it's the same fine. age. The same yeah. age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So obviously there is something that has gone wrong in that hip. There is some tightness. There's something that has reduced blood flow. We have, and even if you replace it, you're going to be replacing it. It won't be long before you'll need a hip replacement on the other hip. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just, it becomes that sort of cycle, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, and there's, there's complications of surgery. It's not just, um, I'm, I'm not saying that surgery is, all surgery is bad. As surgery can be reserved for life-threatening situations, for sure. I mean, my appendix was going to burst. I was very grateful they removed it from me before you I had did. Tons, your tonsils, my tonsils, you yeah. so my tonsils made me so ill when I was young. They got rid of those too. And, and in situations where it puts you in a place where, your life is threatened by infection mm -hmm. or something like that, then, okay, that that's the time and the place. Or yeah. a road accident or, you know, yeah. so, something, something that's necessary, then surgery is great. But a lot of these quick to jumping the gun on replacing limbs and bits of you, mm -hmm. Bones yeah, and is kind of, it, it's a little bit extreme. And it does, surgery often brings with it long recovery time. Especially you, as you do age, because it seems to take, take longer. longer to heal, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it leaves you vulnerable to needing more surgeries down the line. And we see that like people that have one bit replaced, as you say, often they'll get to need another one replaced a little while down the line. And people don't recover as they age so much from the anesthetic or so quickly or their yeah. immune system doesn't recover either, does it? No. So. No. And, and it is obviously the creation of scar mm. tissue. Um, which we will talk about in a bit. That brings on a whole whack of issues. That's a whole um, other game. It hits a whole other game, yeah. And then there's the, there is nothing we can do. And, and this is sometimes the first response. This is sometimes where people get thrown straight away. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to just put up with it. Other times, it's when the other options have been exhausted and the problem has kind of broken through. And um, I think... You know, we say it here on the slide, regardless of when you hear it, it is killer. There is nothing worse than being told that you are beyond fixing, right? I mean, but we do have this friend of ours that is an excellent psychiatrist and he'll be able to help you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's it, right? So this is, you know, this is one of my favorite slides in these webinars. Like, well, so what if rather than accepting this as fact, we challenge it? So as we said at the beginning here, the truth is that you can resolve your chronic disease, your illness, or your pain without drugs and without surgical intervention. So there is something we can do. So we said this earlier, right? Think about it. If our body is designed to heal itself, why isn't it healing? When you were a kid and you fell and you cut your leg, it healed. When you broke a bone, it healed. So age seems like the logical answer but as we just said <laughs> that doesn't make sense no, I, I don't i don't i don't you believe don't believe that don't believe no, no. And, and and that's it right it's there's some sort of impedance we're not built to fall apart it just doesn't make sense we get cut we bleed we heal we get sick we fight it off we heal something is standing in the way of recovery that's right and what is that something so over 80 percent all chronic disease, illness, and pain is the result of inflammation. And I believe that includes mental health too, does it not? So that's oh, yeah. See. yeah, to a certain extent. We're, we're talking about 4,000 diseases. It's a lot of diseases. It's a lot of diseases. Four, to think about it, 4,000 chronic diseases are caused by inflammation at the onset. And yeah. they keep adding to that list, don't they? They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it keeps going up. Like autoimmune diseases, we're up mm. to over a hundred autoimmune diseases mm. now. Well, and, and I, I have a theory about autoimmune diseases in the sense that all autoimmunes are the same. They just have different they names for different manifested little, yeah. places. Yeah. Right, and... All inflammation. All inflammation yeah. based. Inflammation of the yeah. gut, autoimmune, Crohn's. Inflammation of the joints, yeah. autoimmune, rheumatoid arthritis, right? And the list... And it's really cool to think right now when you say I, and we've got we're up to what nine million Americans that have survived from COVID, COVID mm -hmm. which means that three million they're saying one third three million of those people will be long haulers, which means that they will suffer from some form of disease 
such as brain fog, a heart, and, the, and they may have anxiety, anguish, but all of them related to inflammation. Right. So, and, and a lot of them, uh, the medical people are not able to explain. So how do you explain brain fog to somebody in, in the medical field? But what they do know is that it's all connected to inflammation somehow. Right, yeah, yeah, and, and this is it, right? I mean, we do say here, it's probably not the root of all disease, but I mean, I don't think that's too much of an over-exaggeration when we're up well, over yeah, 4,000. There's over 35,000 diseases. Right, so. Maybe 15,000 diseases are things that you don't usually get all the time because you don't live in that form of tropical climate, climate where you climate can get them. Where you get parasites and that sort of thing. Right. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of diseases out there, but 4,000, think about the common ones. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, so it is a bold statement, but it has a lot of truth behind it. And when we look to inflammation as a body wrecking event that sticks around, blocks electrical communication, causes us pain and discomfort, and then we start to see why we may not be healing. Yeah. And then of course, we wear drugs as a mask. So people take medications when they feel pain, and these medications will cover up the pain. And it doesn't matter whether it's pharmaceutical, um, marijuana or CBD oil, um, hardcore street drugs, um, even lots of alcohol, right? It may mask the problem, but it doesn't do anything to fix it. So you change out your sad face for your happy face and you go about your day. And well, four hours later, you get your sad face back. You put your sad face back on. And <laughs> well, here's the paradox of it all. So, so you're, you're having a hard time walking, you have pain in your joints, you have pain in your knees, and you have a hard time going down the stairs. Right. You take Tylenol or Advil, and then you skip down the stairs. Have you not stopped to think, what is going on? Mechanically, I'm all right, because I take this pill and the pain goes away mm -hmm. and I'm able to walk. Right. So, so what is the real thing that is going on? Right. Somewhere in your brain, that this Advil or this Tylenol has turned off a switch, mm -hmm. but you're all right. So why don't you wait, forget the pill, forget the Tylenol yet. I know this is, this is crazy, but I've done it, okay? I've done this. I, I needed it to walk down the stairs. But then I said to myself, how come I couldn't walk down the stairs half an hour ago? But you can't now. Pain, but I can now when I take this. Mechan and I was skipping down the stairs. I'm going down the stairs. I said, there is something up here that is keeping me from skipping down the stairs. Yeah. I did not at all. It goes away. Well, and sometimes it's that, how quickly does it happen too, right? Like some people will take that stuff and then five minutes later, they're like, okay, yeah. Yeah. My yeah. headache's better now. Just like on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you want to do then, what I did, is I said, I'm not taking it anymore. And I walked down the stairs until my brain understood that I'm going to keep walking until the pain goes away. <laughs> and, then it, and then it turns it off for you, right? And it turns it off. <laughs> and, and I think, yeah, I mean, this is the thing, right? And if you ignored that, if you just kept taking the pill, then your brain isn't, it knows this problem and it's trying to get your attention. And you're saying, no, I don't want to listen to you. Don't want to listen to you. And eventually, what's it going to do? It's going to make it worse so that you listen. Because uh, it's trying, it's spinning up a flare, right? Right. So, you know, if we're not healing, it's because of inflammation. And you've said this before, right? It is impossible to regenerate in the presence of inflammation. So we always have to deal with the inflammation first before we can start to heal. So you have to understand that if you didn't have a brain, you wouldn't have inflammation. Right. You wouldn't have pain. You wouldn't yeah. have pain, yeah. You wouldn't have pain. <laughs> So, so somewhere in your brain, there is a command that is given to give you pain. Yeah. But there's also a system, there is also a button that we have found that actually turns it off. Right. Like putting the brakes on the car. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll get to that in a second. So yeah, the answer becomes obvious. So if the root cause of disease is inflammation, then we need to shut down the inflammation to cut the power to the disease. So, and this is it, right? This is the question we just posed with the, the idea of turning off these inflammatory signals. So what if we did have a way to turn them off? And it's the difference between closing your eyes to block out the light or flipping the switch to shut it off. Mm -hmm. When you close your eyes, the light's still on, 
you still sort of see it's there and you're tricking yourself into believing it's dark. Yeah. But when you flip the switch, it's actually dark. So you've shut it off. Pills are covering your eyes and microcurrent is flipping the switch. And we did sort of talk about microcurrent at the beginning, but what is it? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Some form of energy. <laughs> yes. So the most common response, and even today I was fielding this question again, when people hear about microcurrent is, ah, so it's like tens, tens device. Yeah. yeah. That today too. Uh -huh. Yeah. And no, the PEMF map, yeah, that may happen sometimes, but for the most part, ah, it's like a tens device. And as if by magic, that slide just switched. Yes, I didn't click that. Really, that was yeah. really weird. Yeah. <laughs> so the answer there is wrong, right? On the, <laughs> it's wrong. It's not a tens device. So on these next slides, we're going to discuss tens and PEMF. I may not actually touch upon PEMF too much because it's not as different, right? So tens devices. I didn't ma it didn't magically switch. So a tens device. What does it do? It paralyzes the pain receptors in your body, right? Well, it, it fools the brain. Mm -hmm. it, what it does, it's like electronic Tylenol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it's a lot. So when people make that comparison between tens and microcurrent, it's a dangerous comparison to make. I've had, I know of people that have watched videos of us on YouTube and said, ah, so it's like a tens device, and then they go and they buy a tens device. And then they go saying, I'm going to stimulate my vagus nerve with this TENS device. Oh my God. And the, the lasting conditions they cause themselves by doing that is, it, they're pretty intense. And they're worse than what they were trying to treat in the first place. You have to look at the fact that a TENS device is typically 1,000 times stronger than microcurrent. And it'll, so and this is this is how they achieve this kind of like blocking, right? They're really it's muting, isn't yeah, it? it's, it's muting. Just, yeah. They're just zapping, and and as you say, muting usually while it's on. Yeah, I think for the most part, tens devices don't have much of an effect once you take them off. Um, and you know, they also have a lot of contraindications in their use, which we are very familiar with. You're not supposed to treat your heart, your face. Don't pass over your neck. And <laughs> don't do don't, this, don't, don't, don't do that. Your body. Don't, yeah, <laughs> generally, uh, as you say, we've got our warning, if you are alive, don't use. I, and I don't even say that maybe TENS devices do have their place, but their functions are extremely, extremely. Maybe for re -edu muscle re-education, that was what they were doing. Because they're for, strong right? enough to, to yeah. yeah. Because they can, you know, they, they'll, they'll, they'll grab and release. Yeah. 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 But otherwise, and, and I don't have a slide on PEMFs in here, but I will touch upon those. PEMFs are closer to microcurrent, typically. They are lower frequency. So they mean like pulsed electromagnetic field. Yes. Right. Yeah, so pulse electromagnetic field passes through everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's what we see is that while we do use those as well, uh, incorporated with our microcurrent devices, they take longer to get the results you're looking for. And uh, they're, they don't have the, the connection to the brain. They don't have the ability to stimulate and move muscles. They are just saturating an area with a frequency. So they are not really the same as microcurrent, but they do have their uses. Um, and depending on the PEMF device you get, they are relatively safe. Uh, some of them are really high EMFs, like so scary, like, 40 times your microwave energy blasted on your body. Um, and that's sort of where I get nervous about them. So the low, the low earth level yeah. uh, PEMFs are mm -hmm. more the, the better. The they're gentle ones. They're yeah. gentle ones. And because they're, they're constant. Yeah. So that you have this on duty, uh, what they call um, the duty on, <laughs> is where when you, when you use a PEMF unit, and you're using it for 20 minutes, it's a constant. Yeah. 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 So it's a constant of that of that frequency. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's the sort of the difference there between what a what a PEMF unit is. Then we then we have microcurrent. And people, I mean, when when we started Pain Free for Life, when we we rebranded under Pain Free for Life two years ago, people maybe didn't know too much about what microcurrent was. And honestly, I think if you Googled microcurrent, you probably came up with a facelift. Most of the time. Most of the time. Um, that's transformed. It, it has. Yeah. My, microcurrent is becoming more popular. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of companies that cropped up selling cheap imitation devices. 
Um, there's also frequency specific microcurrent, which has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, that that is still is becoming more prevalent as well. And we're seeing that our devices and a lot of these devices are making their way into clinics across the world and being recognized more legitimately. I think I think because uh, microcurrent has more uh, positive effects that are uh, quantifiable. Mm -hmm. If we look at uh, Stanford, Baylor, all of these different university research centers, so on and so forth, even, even the National Institutes of Health. We're looking at the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, all of these big organizations, the money funded ones, are studying microcurrent. They're not studying TENS. No. Well, there's not much more to study about it. No. <laughs> it does its thing. And, and this is, you know, microcurrent uses body friendly frequencies. Yeah and preferably with sinusoidal waves, because that's body-friendly language, um, to correct imbalances within the body and resolve a problem. And this is why they're getting so much attention, right? There's no blocking, paralyzing, or numbing. You just correct the issue. And there's a lot to it, because you got to know which frequencies to use, which frequency sets are best going to deal with this, that, and the other. Whereas TENS device, you slap on the pads, you turn it on. Usually they're a one cycling program of that very intense electricity. But because on our devices, we have this chip technology, right? Um, so what is a chip? So a chip is like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> good thought, but no. So the chip is the, is the microchip in the device, ah, right? Microchip. Yeah. And, and on that microchip, we we're able to save programs and algorithms, right? So we can write programs onto a chip instead of having to change and channels, so on and so forth. Everything's yeah. all built in. Yeah, and because it's built in, it does it for you a lot of the mm -hmm. time. You turn it on. Ease of use. Yeah, ease of use. You don't have to to master or, or get a PhD to be able to operate it, right? Uh, <laughs> so it takes all that work um, and it's been on, onboarded into the technology to do it for you. So we talked about flipping the switch on inflammation. And in essence, this is what microcurrent enables us to do. We can send the correct frequencies into the body. And these are the same frequencies the body uses to communicate. And we can turn off inflammation. So why are you not healing? It could be because of the uh, low level inflammation that is hanging around. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so beyond that as well, you have we've talked about the ability for the device to sort of talk to your body, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about that language getting in there and we're, this is why a microcurrent treatment usually is fairly quick. And then we let the body and the brain do the rest, right? It, we're- So once the body. channels have been opened up, mm -hmm. the body still has to take the time to heal so that you yeah. can use different programs to accelerate that healing process. Exactly, yeah. Uh -huh. See, see, he's, he's got it. Makes more sense than what I said. <laughs> So conversing with the brain. So we just mentioned this microcurrent technology works with the brain. So the process is that the frequencies enter the skin through the microcurrent device. Because of the voltage of our microcurrent technology, the frequencies can penetrate deep into the body. So it's high voltage, is that right? Well, yeah, what we do is high voltage, but very short periods of time. So what we were, we're trying to do is not excite the, uh, the the other fibers, the myelinated fibers, what we want to get at are the C fibers, the non-myelinated ones that carry information up to the central nervous system. Right, right. To be able to get to do that, you need that high voltage. Right. And high voltage doesn't mean how it's gonna hurt. It means push. Yeah. It means how much push on a very small amount of current. Yeah. So you're not gonna be zapped. Not not danger high voltage yeah. here. <laughs> um, you're not gonna be zapped. It's extremely gentle. But that voltage is important to mention because yes. it's what's going to deliver it in deep. Low voltage devices, this is going to work on the surface, really. That's right. So these frequencies trigger a response from the brain. The brain acknowledges the problem. And then the body and the device can work together to fix the problem. Right. Total genius is something that we've seen in Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's science fiction, it's but, science real. Fiction, but real. And then we come to our goal. Right. This you mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, yeah. maybe prior to me turning on the recording button. Um, but our goal, or even before before me, when I was a, a wee little child, your goal, the business's goal, 
was to get one of these devices in every home. And like toilet paper. Like toilet paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have toilet paper in every home, you should have microcurrent in every home. So that was that was so funny because Dr. Oz asked Dr. Oz asked Lori, he says, hey, what what is it that what you would need? Your goal? <laughs> what's your goal? He says, one in every home like toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, but rather than, than taking care of messes in the bathroom, uh, microcurrent- take, messes, take care of messes in the people. Yeah, in the people, exactly. There, there won't be any more reaching for pills to numb the pain, there will be no more inflammation, no more degenerating, and there's no ongoing costs. You're not gonna be going to the, uh, the pharmacy and getting a refill and spending $300 every month. We're going to see a doctor and spending money. And spending you whatever spend. you spend, or your physio, or your chiro, or all these different things, it is, it's the dream is to make this the first thing you reach for in your medicine cabinet, right? You have a problem, you reach for your microcurrent device and you address the problem before it becomes a, problem. a big problem. Yeah, exactly. I don't, know, I don't know how many people have seen the, you remember the tsunami that had hit, I think it was on the coast of uh, uh, Asian coast, the East. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That Christmas. Yeah, and, and they made a movie. Mm. And in the movie, the biggest problem is that, that it was getting to the hospital to get to, get to the rummage, mm. the, to the rummage for the garbage and the, mm. and the stuff that was out there. And then when they finally got to the hospital, the lineups were crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If everyone had had a device, if everybody had a device, you could treat yourself first, mm. and then, yeah. then, then talk to your doctor. But you know, yeah, yeah. Well, and if you're new to this, you, you may be saying, oh, okay, yeah, but some of those injuries were pretty bad. Like, but you'll see. We got pictures. We'll That's show you some pretty yeah. bad stuff. We'll show you some pretty bad stuff, not for the faint of heart. Um, so, what conditions can this treat? So, really, any inflammatory condition. It can also improve your immune system, and it can repair damaged tissue. And that repairing damaged tissue should be absolutely amazing to people because the fact that it can repair your surface tissue means that it can repair anything. Right, wound healing. Well, that goes from the inside out, anyway. Exactly. So. Yeah. The biggest problem with uh, with wounds that don't heal is inflammation right at the base. Yeah. And when inflammation, you have inflammation to start with, and you're going to have hypoxia or lack of oxygen. If you have a lack of oxygen, you don't, you can't produce ATP, which is making new cells. Right. So the tissue dies. So the tissue will die gradually. So the idea was, and I've seen this in Malaysia when we did that research, when uh, in, in, in Malaysia, they were, when they, they, they would call me breathing. And you have a wound, they would scrape it scrape. out. Yeah. Oh. And they do it with a scalp. Mm -hmm. But they were creating pain, and which was creating inflammation and so on and so forth. Stop the healing. <laughs> so then they give an appointment, come back in next week, we're going to do it all over again. God. <laughs> just after you start to heal, yeah, and after you're just getting over the stress and the panic and the trauma yeah, yeah. of it, then you go for it again. Yeah. So the, the whole idea, of what was really uh, a balm for their wounds and their pain, was the idea that I don't really need to do this deep breathing as often. Yeah. And if I have a device that actually kills the inflammation right at the base, then we can accelerate healing. Absolutely. So the whole project was uh, my using microcurrent to accelerate wound healing. Yeah, yeah, and so that you know, in essence, we'll show you some pictures, but yeah. it's gonna it's gonna breed truth to the fact that you can repair your body Absolutely. even if you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Yeah. So so conditions, you know, this is just a really short list, honestly. But current medicine, our textbook has over two hundred and twenty pages, I think, of yeah. protocols in it so for different conditions. So you got. A lot of options, but arthritis, prostatitis, fractures, non-healing and even infected wounds, uh, endometriosis, diverticulitis, ulcerative colitis, Lyme disease, menstrual cramps, pretty much any autoimmune condition. You know, I, I could go on and on actually. These, these are all uh, these are all conditions that you'll find in PubMed. Mm -hmm. These are government publications. When you look at and do research on microcurrent, what it can do. These are these are they're in the, these are what you find yeah on, on and this is because they're they're expanding they're they're, they're known these yeah. are known things yeah yeah and if you have any questions guys I believe you can hit the Q and A button and you can add questions in there so that we can answer them at the end um, and and keep everything going smoothly along there 
So scar tissue, this is a pretty gnarly scar actually here, but scar tissue, we told, we told you we were gonna talk about scar tissue. So this sort of, scar tissue creates not only pain for a lot of people, but it will also create a communication blockage, right? Yeah. Well, scar tissue is collagen as well. Mm -hmm. And collagen, it turns out, is a communication system within your body. But the difference between the, the collagen that makes up a scar and the collagen that it acts as a communication system, one is a conductor and the other is a capacitor. Right. You take the water out of collagen and it becomes a capacitor. Capacitor is a storage system for energy. So it doesn't let that energy pass through. It, it doesn't pass through. It just stores it. You see? And it'll go all the way to one and a half volts is what they, they have well, found. Bold in there. So you've got like a little battery, a scar becomes a battery that blocks that communication. So then when we go back to why are you not healing? Mm -hmm. Perhaps you have a little storage battery <laughs> right. that is breaking that communication. Right. And I, I think so if, if, for example, I would have a scar on my wrist here. Yeah. And I would have started to get really bad hand pain, right? Like maybe my joints are, are breaking down there and it's just, it's not healing. I'm not getting any better. And you have to look at the fact that this scar on my wrist here, as the signals for healing try to get to my hand. They're turned back. They're, 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 they're turned back. So they actually work to, they try and find a way around and if they can't, I guess they just dissipate. Just go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just say, okay, well, I guess we can't do that. <laughs> and so unfortunately like Give up again. <laughs> yeah i mean scar tissue creates oh my goodness so many problems so much so that it is our first rule of microcurrent when you when you get your device you will be told to treat all scars and we ask you to think really carefully about this because scars don't just mean the obvious ones like a surgical scar or that scratch you got when you were a kid but we're thinking you know we're talking about piercings potentially tattoos your belly button is technically a scar. I mean, it's the first scar and everyone has one. Um, so <laughs> so we, we have to kind of look and, and question all these things, clear the scar tissue, yeah. if we want healing to occur, right? Um, it could be like on your, under your head. Yep. Most people don't even think they forgot about the scar they had. They, they, they bumped their head on the bed when they were younger and they got a scar there. And people also will say, well, that never bothered, but how come my problem only stacks up now? Right, yeah. you know? You're mortgaged, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a, good, yeah. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, and so all of the problems, you, you, can, you can start to unwind them by following the rules of microcurrent. If you clear your scars, that will be the best time you ever spend with your device, right? I think you, you've, you're gonna get more benefit out of that than like anything else ever that you could do for your body just to clear that communication up. And it doesn't take hours on end. No. It doesn't take daily treatments. You need to electrically neutralize those capacitors, right? Turn them into conductors, allow communication to continue. And wow. I've had people that, you know, we've not treated scars. We started doing scars, what, 17 years ago, maybe oh, yeah. 18 years. Yeah. And it, it did become our rule number one because of the effects. And a lot, a lot of times we even had people complain about pain and the pain would disappear after the scars. Right. And and how many times did we see the emotions mm -hmm. that were kept in with scars? Because everybody remembers, most people remember the event. Even if it's locked away. Yeah. It'll come out. It'll come It'll out. Come out. Mm -hmm. So when you're treating, and, and one of the ideas is don't treat, if somebody has a lot of scars, it could have been true war, or whatever it was. Don't treat all those scars at the same time because you'll find that emotionally, you'll see the emotional release is going to be overwhelming mm -hmm. for them. Right. You want to keep a box of tissue and close in hand when you do all of those. Right. But you will have to do all the scars over a short period of time. Yeah. Even if it's the next day, the day after, but you will have to do all those scars. Well, we've right. known people, haven't we, that have actually not remembered that they had certain operations or scars. <sighs> remember that crazy. kidney lady? She didn't. She, she, she actually didn't remember. We asked, we asked people, we get them to write down where the scars are on a, on a, on a chart. On a chart. And this one said, I don't have any. Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking at her back and I'm like, what the hell is this really large scar? And I said to her, she says, I've never had any surgeries. 
And I said to her, well, you have, because this is a huge scar. And in the end, she remembered that when she was like in her teens or whatever, she'd actually had a kidney removed and she had forgotten that she'd had a kidney removed. So obviously in her mind, she didn't want to remember it. It was something that was so I bad. bet you were thinking, did she wake up in a bathtub full <laughs> of ice and someone had uh, cut a kidney? So I so it was the weirdest thing. Are, they are, yeah. yeah, yeah. Break <laughs> demand. And I think, you know, I've seen even today, you know, working with someone and um, talk about women treating scars. Yeah, yeah, it's been done. And then there's a, this kind of chunk missing out of the shoulder. And I was like, well, what's this? And they, they told me what it was. And I'm like, did you treat it as a scar? No, I didn't think about it, right? So we have to- Yeah, you have a mole removed. Yeah, and right. Don't feel that, you have yeah. to think critically yeah. um, about what is a scar because you, you want to make sure you clear all of that up. Um, so of course, due to the nature of these devices, the ones we have, and even our new Genesis, one of the critical things was it has to be able to treat scars. There's no point in us selling you a microcurrent device that doesn't, that treat, doesn't scars. treat scars because you will not get the resolution you are looking for. So we put that in there. So you need the, the correct program. Um, also, because of the voltage being good, the high voltage, we can get deep scar tissue. That's the result of surgery. Yeah. So we're not saying, well, you, sorry, you had a C-section, so your scar, we can't do enough to, to make Even if you just had a baby, mm -hmm. not even if you had a C-section, if you just had a baby, you probably have have scarring from that right. internal. Yeah. And you can work directly the gynecological protocol and that will, mm -hmm. but do it in, in the scar, 77. yeah, in the 77. And something interesting as well about scars that only actually occurred to me today was that even if you didn't get cut, right, if you got crushed, if something fell on you that was really heavy, mm -hmm. the tissue that was damaged, some of that repaired muscle inside would be scar, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. we gotta think. We, we go through, we put our bodies through the ringer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when we, we have to critically examine it, every part of it and think, well, what did we do um, and, and how? And being able to treat scars, you know, as I say, rule number one. And this, this scar here, um, hopefully you can see on the slide, this is a good one because this was one treatment. And you can see all the ropes um, on that scar there where it's sort of keeping them together and raised. And um, then here, it's smoothed, it's smoothed out. out. Those bonds have been broken. Yeah, it was a scar that I, I, I treated years ago when we were doing a video. And, and they wanted to do scars. I said, but I don't have anybody with scars. And the cameraman said, yeah, but I have a scar. <laughs> Pull so, up shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so, so one of the other publicity people took over the camera and we, we did the scar. Right. At, and, and he says, since I... I went as over the kettle on my bicycle and the pedal came up and ripped my back. He says, ever since then, it's been numb back then. Mm -hmm. It's been kind of cold. Right. So after one minute of treatment, I could see the change come about. And immediately he said, I feel this. He says, it's almost like you get a heater on me. On the, it's and, warming up. Yeah, I just warmed right up and the numbness disappeared. Mm -hmm. So then that's when I took that second picture. Yeah. 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 And, and that's one of many like scar tissue images, right? I mean, oh, it's no, just, yeah, the countless really. Okay, so inflammation. So we talked about inflammation a lot. I'm sure people are sick of hearing about it, but it's important. Mm -hmm. And the second rule of microcurrent is to treat our inflammation. We right. usually refer to it as point of pain, right? Uh, but we need to get in and we need to deal with the inflammation because if inflammation is the root of all disease and we can eliminate inflammation, then we're ripping the weed out of the root. Well, they have to, you have to understand that uh, healing is impossible as long as there's inflammation. Right. Yeah. 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 And so you can't heal with the inflammation present. So people in chronic pain, if you have pain that's persistent, and I'm not saying, you know, arm pain or leg pain, if you have chronic gut inflammation, then your gut can't heal. No. Right. And I think the results of like ulcerative colitis, these, these wounds that are created in your digestive tract, <laughs> persistent inflammation that breaks stuff down. Right. And it's just, it's the same with everything. So if you have, if you get rid of the inflammation and then you give the body the ability to get through and, and, and heal. Right. Yeah, and we could, we could start a conversation on the microbiome, which is a question, <laughs> but you know, it we takes don't have time for that. Yeah. Really we, we don't have time for the microbiome. Uh, we also have to take it one step further, and we've been doing this more recently. Uh, we've got these manuals now that come with the devices that show you 
where these trigger points are. So inflammation and pain are connected, but sometimes the pain comes from a different place than you think. So through the use of what pain doctors call trigger points, we can self-assess and determine the real source of the pain and then take it out. So in this example here, um, this, this is the clearest example of all the, pain, the trigger point shots. You have the, this pain on your hand right. and you treat that with your device and you're like, okay, yeah, it feels better. And then two minutes later, it starts, it to, starts come to come back. back and your machine's like, not good. Yeah, my machine's <laughs> not working. Okay, may we take a breath and we think about the fact that pain doesn't always manifest where the inflammation is, where the problem is, right? The trigger point charts show us where referred pain can be. So the black axes on these charts refer to the area that could be the source of the pain. So you, what we do is we tend to treat both the area that hurts, the black axe areas, and then you can also do some passive treatment afterwards to try and stimulate the, the area as well. Yeah, because when, as long as the CDA area on the X was referring pain to the thumb, yeah. and, and what's happening at the thumb, there's, de there's a gradual de degeneration. degeneration. Mm -hmm. So now, now you disconnect the causal factor, now you have to treat the thumb, right? Yeah, you have exactly. You generate what has been damaged over time. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of the time it's either one or the other, and as you say, it comes down to this, well, it's just not working for me, when actually we're probably not hitting the right spot. Yeah. And these charts give us a, a sort of a cheat sheet to people that are easy to understand as to where to go to deal with these things. Uh, so they're a really important uh, part of everything. And then regeneration. I mean, cellular regeneration is important because if we didn't have it, we just would come shed our skin and just fall to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so in the presence of infection disease or even chronic inflammation, the body will start to experience breakdown microcurrent will remove inflammation, uh, but it also has the capability to, to repair damaged tissue fast. Um, and I've seen from the most severe wound to the smallest cut, you know. Because? Because you're getting rid of the inflammation and then you're bringing in blood flow. Blood flow is the big, it's, yeah. it's really what it's all about. Yeah. Microcurrent, if you look it up anywhere, the first thing it does, one of the first things that it does is increases blood flow. Right. And I think people with, conditions like Renaud's disease. Really love that because none of those cold hands and feet can get warmed up a little bit, right? <laughs> the actual yeah, Lori and I, I remember we were in Montreal and very cold with just about 35 below zero outside and the man came in, had Renaud's mm. disease where white hands, white fingers and the guy suffered from this terribly. We treated him and, and then we sent him outside. Came back, is that good? <laughs> My hands are good. My hands are good. <laughs> I've done the same thing in Montana, and we have a yeah. video on it. Yeah. Same idea. Renault's is treatable. Right. And it's often told it's not, right? Everybody's told that it's not. Mm -hmm. There's nothing they can do, but and that's an emotional problem. It's related to stress, mm -hmm. long-term, chronic, but it is totally treatable. And I think, you know, we talk about blood flow. We should definitely mention the fact that this extends to different parts of the body too. Eyes, right? right. Increasing the oxygenation of the eyes through increasing, increasing the blood flow will allow us to treat a lot of eye conditions that are otherwise you're told there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, right? that is age related. Age related, oh, again, yeah, age related, <laughs> age related problems. So what we need to take away from the effect of microcurrent's ability to regenerate is that not only can we remove the pain, but we can also reverse the damage done, right? Yeah. So the onboard pharmacy. So I know this is a, a, a title that our, our good friend, Dr. Mumby likes to use, uh, onboard pharmacy. So, but really this is sort of more of it. I always consider this sort of more of a biofeedback, the brain's ability to work with the body, right? It's um, how we work through this brain pain connection. Or how the brain heals, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And the amount of chemicals that can be manufactured by the brain itself right. is way beyond what most pharmacies are able to make. Yeah. Way yeah. beyond. And we're yeah. born with them. Yeah, we just forget how to use them. Mm -hmm. that's right. and, and I think that's how it comes down to this ability to heal that we lose as we, we age. Our age related loss of healing. Yeah. And kids, it, kids I, are so quick to no, resolve their yeah. issues, aren't they? they? Are. I, think, I think it's age related acceptance of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Well, and I think, uh, you know, I, I'm, I I'm, would be considered by many to be young and I should stop complaining, but I did notice that I had started to experience more aches and pains after I turned 30. And, you know, it, it's, it's, probably, probably, on your mind. it's yeah. probably all in my mind because that's what I was told yeah. would happen. But hanging around your old dad. Isn't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so essentially what we use the devices for, right? We use the biofeedback capabilities to talk to the brain and then get the brain to deal with the issue. Yeah. And all the devices are equipped with some level of it, with the professional ones having the most advanced, um, but, but enough in these devices to be able to bring it in, get it to work. Just stepped on a Lego brick. Yeah, you, that, that was what happened to you. You can tell I put that there as a personal <laughs> pain point. Yeah, so I mean, you know, touching something hot's one thing, but when you step on that Lego brick, <laughs> I don't know if there is anything more painful than that. I know. <laughs> when you were a kid and you did it. It didn't hurt very much at all. But now, now yeah. your kid Even though, you, you know, your feet get more calloused as you get older yeah, as well. But, uh, but for some reason, yeah. it, I, I think it must be an anger thing too, that why the Lego bricks on my floor. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm talking with the brain and this is one of the most powerful things about this particular microcurrent technology, right? By sending a signal to your brain, receiving one back to the device, you can bring the brain into the healing equation and you can ask it to treat. And I don't think there is anything else really that competes with that. Now think about it. I mean, everybody out there, I want you to think about this. Up to now, the brain has never been included in the healing process. No. Medically, they've done everything that they could to exclude, exclude the brain it. in the healing process. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Block it. Block it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't, we don't want the brain to block. Well, they're separate, aren't they? Yeah. They're not part of the body. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like Cartesian duality. Yeah, no, exactly. No, don't, don't include the brain. Yeah. So, and this is it, right? Like by, it's almost, it seems simple, but for some reason it's not obvious enough. Because it's just not included in other yeah. in other methods. Yeah. Um, well, it's a different doctor for each. The brain is a different doctor to the body doctor. Yeah. So they can't possibly meet in the middle. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah well, absolutely. And you get your your cardio doctor that says that it's probably a digestive issue, and then you're you know, no, it's actually in your mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they are there's maybe sixty five different medical modalities, and none of them are aligned. Mm -hmm. There's not oh. not a holistic approach. They're not looking at no, but that's the body what we want to do. We look yeah. at the body as a whole. Yeah. So yeah, and and charging up your ATP, I think. This is probably what is ATP. Uh, yeah, most people just say, well, "What is ATP?" Yeah, well, it sounds like something that comes in a can. Yeah, it does, <laughs> right? Like drink ATP. <laughs> but you know what? If it, if it did, if you could drink ATP, everyone would do it. Oh, well, we said okay. something on Facebook today if, if, uh, that we we posted on our our group. If fitness was a drink, everyone would drink it, right? And I think it's the same thing here. If it was easy, we would do it now. I got good news for everyone. Charging up your ATP is easy. And we do this with all of our yeah. devices. We, ATP, so you said, what is ATP? So ATP, if I remember my biology classes, is adenosine triphosphate, is that right? You got it. Good. 100%. <laughs> so that's our cellular energy. And so this is what is used for our cells to be able to function, right? They need the energy to function and replicate and do all that stuff. To wiggle, jiggle, and to make copies of itself and mm -hmm. use ATP. Yeah. So when fully charged, our cells will optimally communicate. They'll prevent breakdown. They'll improve overall health. I believe even, you know, by having that optimal electrical charge, by having that ATP, they can resist disease um, and deformity and all of those things as well. So. This simple to perform protocol can be done daily and will benefit anyone and everyone. And if you do get a device, if you don't already have one, when you get hooked up with your treatment coordinator, they will tell you to do this protocol. doesn't matter what issue you have, because if you can have the cellular energy, then you've got the fuel you need to be able to repair. Mm -hmm. Now, everything we've covered up to this point is about our new Genesis device, right? Um, but we want to talk a little bit about the Abazi Life Evolution, because we get a lot of questions about both. And there are a few things that are different in the evolution that are really big, cool things, but we don't want to miss out on. So vagus nerve stimulation. I'll let you, I'll let you talk about vagus nerve stimulation for a bit here. 
Vegas, Vegas simply means vague. It has a meandering. It, it, it wanders about the body. But the vagus nerve is responsible for either keeping you in fight or flight mm -hmm. or keeping you to eat, sleep, digest, assimilate, and heal. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to be in the latter. Yeah. Uh, we want to be in fight or flight when we need to be. Yeah. But the rest, when we're in that fight or flight moment, when we're running from the bear and we have diarrhea, I like that one, and we have diarrhea, the body doesn't stop and say, I got to repair. Yeah, no, it's too busy. It's too busy. I've got to yeah. run from this bear. Yeah. So I'm in fight or flight. When I'm in fight or flight, I'm not in repair mode. Yeah. Right? So if the bear catches me, the diarrhea becomes the bear's problem. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He said, I got a shitty one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't taste too good. That may be a good thing. But uh, so what, what's important to understand is that the vagus nerve, and this this is this has only been discovered lately that the vagus nerve also shuts down inflammation immediately. Yeah. So uh, what we've been doing, and uh, what they've been doing medically, they decided that they would put this little jelly bean size electronic device, hook it onto your vagus nerve and hook it onto your iPad and your, your cell phone. Right. And from a distance, they could go, or, or you could go, oh my God, you know, I'm quite you know. But you no longer have control. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's invasive. It's, it's in your totally invasive. Yeah. Then you have scar tissue. Yeah. And they had to go in. And, and it's very expensive, isn't it? Thirty-five grand. I think they were. They have to replace it every five years. Every five. You know? Can you imagine that? Just that is stressful in itself. Yeah. So what we've been doing is we found a way to be able to treat the vagus nerve topically, which means with the device we can actually go in, and we can treat directly on the vagus nerve and get the same results. And we can just take it right off when we're done. That's yeah. it. So, so if you want to run down the stairs without feeling the pain, you just have to tell, you don't take Advil, Tylenol, or some anti-inflammatory that will scrub your tummy and your kidneys and your liver. This will do the job. <laughs> exactly. You just poke that on your neck and you run it. And, and you run it. This is one of the areas, you can see on the little diagram where the biggest nerve comes out. Well, how much of that, that, like it goes everywhere? It goes everywhere. It's actually number 10 in the cranial nerve complex as part of the cranial nerve system. Yeah. So, and it, uh, it, it'll, it'll do everything from your, in your gut. It actually connects to the, to the digestive system where you have maybe five, seven, seven times more information coming from the digestive system to the brain than from the brain to the digestive system. Yeah. And the same thing about your heart. It actually goes around your heart. So you, if you wanted to work to heal your gut, what yeah. you want to do is you want to work with your vagus nerve. Right? right, yeah. If you want to reprogram your brain, and they're doing this now at the University of Texas at Dallas, they've actually got a research program on now for those who've had stroke to re program the brain and it's all vagus nerve. it's right. all vagus nerve yeah so they're finding many many applications for vagus nerve that we didn't have before right yeah and, and i mean it's some people get scared off by the concept of vagus nerve i run into this a lot when dealing with first time is they they kind of they're like well do i really want to mess with my nerve should i be playing with my neck and and I tell you it's easy to do um, and it is non-invasive and it does the trick. So you have to be able to, to get past that and work on it because it is it is easy. It, it um, is totally, um, it's, it's very safe. powerful. And it oh. is safe. Yeah, it's, totally safe. it's safe and powerful. And 4,000 diseases, inflammation, mm -hmm. remember that. Yeah. You just shut it down. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so you can you can do this one. So this is an, this is an evolution feature. Um, so this is why we're covering these now. Um, nerve feedback. So, so treating the brain with alpha waves. So you mentioned fight or flight mode. Fight or flight, well, transcranially, yes. from one year to the other, we can introduce alpha waves. So what well, your brain puts out many frequencies, alpha, beta, delta, theta, gamma frequencies. Yeah. The alpha is the eat, sleep, digest, assimilate, and repair frequency. Yeah. Your digestive tract, when you are eating, assimilating, is running at seven hertz. Right? Yeah. 
your bones when they are repairing operate at seven hertz yeah. strangely enough when you're walking on the on the earth on the planet hertz. it's seven hertz schumann waves are seven yeah. hertz seven hertz is the secret yeah <laughs> to 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 the health yeah and so what uh, people would say yeah but how long can i do this for <laughs> do it do it just do it <laughs> yeah. i um we we have people that sleep all night with these ear clips on oh, yeah. you can wear them throughout the day and it will fight off anxiety um it will help keep you calm and in that healing state so that you can actually repair and uh it will also fight off insomnia and that you know if you're in if now you have to remember like why are you not sleeping some people fall asleep really well and then they wake up because of their pain that's not an alpha you know that's not a yeah. not being able to sleep because you have insomnia that's your pain waking you up but if you can't if you're one of those people that sits in bed and just thinks and thinks and thinks about all up. yeah you can't switch off all the mistakes you made that day um or that you're gonna make the next day that's your beta mode and you're stuck in it and the alpha will force your brain out of it so, so beta then is your fight or flight yeah. alpha is your easily digest assimilate and repair and always remember that yeah definitely and we have another mode that's coming up which is really exciting yes and this is our gamma mode oh yeah gamma so gamma is i think it was one that we didn't use for the longest time and then all of a sudden it got a lot of uses overnight <laughs> for what it can do and you'll see here you, we even got a picture of the protocol here we did a internal study in our private group um where we asked everyone to contribute and we had um we essentially were treating originally it was meant to be ptsd but people tried it for different things anxiety depression etc and you'll see the results there on that chart we had a 95 percent improvement in anxiety an 85 percent improvement in depression uh a 75 percent improvement in ptsd uh, we didn't even try for sleep but people saw a 90 percent improvement in the length of time they would sleep um, so that was a sort of a side effect and the few people that tried ADHD, we did see a 75% improvement there as well. And that is just by simply pumping gamma. Yeah, and, and uh, what you do is you put the pads on over your eyebrows. And this is the, where the, the terminal ends of the trigeminal nerve, which are also part of the cranial set. Yeah. Right? So if you do this, you get into the cranial nerves, which control all, all of that problems. Yeah. And you'll find like these, these results, people may ask anyway, how long did they take to achieve? It was a six week, um, you know, study. study in essence. And it was just 30 minutes a day. People, it varied, honestly, it was like 60, 40 as to whether people did it before bed or in the morning. So we don't think that with those results that there was a big enough difference between who got the success and who didn't based on yeah. time of day. So it's just, comfortable treatment passively to do this that is it we're not asking it's one of those things like doing a little amount to do a lot of work right and the latest I'm finding we're finding a lot now in, in the latest brain books mm -hmm. uh, on, on, on how brain functions we're starting to hear more and more about gamma mm -hmm. and how gamma actually has the capacity to be able to reprogram your brain the other one is also they're finding that gamma and alzheimer's Yes. Yeah. And, Helping and, to yeah. detox the brain, right? Of yeah. Yeah. And when your, your brain, when, when you're not uh, getting that proper repair of sleep, yeah. you, you're building up this amyloid plaque and you're building up uh, other stuff that is contracting the little vessels in your brain that, that act like brooms and will just <laughs> sweep out toxins. Right. And uh, when you're getting uh, the gamma, apparently is diluting those little vessels, so that we're getting a detoxing of the brain. Yeah, of the glial cells. So the glial cells are the ones, and and can brain cancers are glial cell cancers, right? And gliomas. Yeah. So so uh, and Alzheimer's. So we're we gamma is now the new frequency for anti Alzheimer's, which is kind of. Cool. Yeah, so you have to add it in for that as well on top of, well, on top uh, of this or stuff. read or do a lot of reading. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go on to Google. I mean, we have the capacity. I mean, go to Google 
and and look at Alzheimer's and gamma, and you'll get all of the information right there. Absolutely, so that is pretty cool. And the last difference between the evolution and the the genesis will be fMRSI. Right. Um, so fMRSI is a special program uh, that is good for regeneration of joints and things like that, as well as for muscle problems. And I think it's also considered a chronic pain mode, right? So it is. Right? Yeah. Muscle rehab, the whole thing. Yeah. It's it's really one of those wonderful programs. Yeah. That you do to do that repair. Once you get the inflammation out. Would you repair our size of the yeah. program? Yeah, and so so this this algorithm here, you know, it does help with the production of ATP as well. I know we yeah. saying that microcurrent in general improves ATP by was five hundred percent. Yeah, I believe five hundred percent. Yeah, um, it helps regenerate damaged joints, snuffs out chronic pain, and fills the area with oxygen, uh, getting it all good for healing again. Now this is a program that is only available in the evolution device as well. Um, is it necessary for pain? No. Is it helpful to have if you've got chronic condition? Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Fibromyalgia and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You, you, need, you, need, you need that program, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so that brings us to the end of the programs. We're going to go on to some before and afters now. We promised you we would show you some some successes um, into how they all work, right? Yeah. Um, this one is an oldie but a goodie. I, I couldn't not put this one in. It's so, it's so funny because you, you go from, you'd almost go from the right to the left. Actually, this guy had a welding machine, an electrical device. It blew up, yeah. And it burned him quite severely. Yeah. You look at his hands and his face. And this is all within a two-week period. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that on the dates from the pictures there. Like, he is, he's completely, he's gone from burnt completely, right? Singed and swollen. And, and, swollen and back to, to normal, yeah. And, uh, yeah, as you say, from the... 24th to the 7th of the next 24th of uh, October yeah to the 7th of November was so one two week period and, and I didn't see any before the blow up but he probably looks better now I, I would say so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so that's that's one that's a, that's a good example as well about scar tissue preventing that from happening right because that burnt tissue it goes pretty fast and this one here so, this one, I did this one myself, and it's so funny because the kids, when they come down and saw this case in, in the clinic, they just went, oh, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> and he was a young a young fellow, 21, 22 years old. He was uh, uh, he was studying to become a SARTEC, search and uh-huh. rescue technician with the Canadian Air Force. So they'd sent him in Northern, into Northern Alberta. Yeah. And uh, he just failed to uh, to, to, to feet dry his feet mm-hmm. yeah. before before turning in, and uh, so this is what happens. Frostbite is extremely a severe thing, and I don't know what percentage of people actually lose their toes, their fingers, their ears from frostbite in so long. Yeah, and uh, so he, he had an appointment with the surgeon on the Monday, and this was like on the Thursday, and Bobby who brought him into me. Being used to bring a lot of people, and he said, uh, Well, he said, what can we do? I said, Well, let's get started right away. And yeah, we, yeah, we, we first thing we did was inflammation, right? Bring the inflammation down, and then the next thing we did was increase blood flow, right? So we used a program called Vaso V A S O, Vaso impregnates the cell itself the blood. So we were able to do that, and within 10 days, I believe, was it 10? Four, the following, after no, four it, days, was, it, it was the following Monday. Yeah, the following Monday. Surgery. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, so before that, and then I think there was obviously more beyond this as well because he still got these little, uh, yeah, yeah, that was four days. So, uh, and what, what happened is he disappeared, you see. And I, and I asked his sergeant, I said, uh, Where is this boy? I need to see him. Yeah, and he said, Well, he's gone to the mainland to see his girlfriend. Oh boy! <laughs> they just gave it. He yeah. he thought, oh, you know, I'm good, right? Uh, yeah. Going. Well, he was walking around, with, with not feeling any kind of pain. So when he, I said, when he comes back, oh. ask him to give me a call. And that was the two weeks because he came back a week yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. He? Then he said, then he, we called him up, and I, and I said, where are you? He said, I'm on the base, and, I, and he said, okay. I said, I want you to come in. I need to check this out. Yeah. I'll do some before and after shots. And uh, so he jogged over with a bottle of wine, and he said he jogged all the way from the base to about, I think it was about five, six miles. Right. Well, and I think you can even see the color in the toes, right? I mean, there's the, on this, there's the black. Yeah. Um, and on here, we got it back to normal. Even the toenails, right? Like, yeah. 
here you can see the blackening under the toenails and here i mean there's no black the nice pink well the pink is probably for long to die <laughs> <laughs> these are cold feet again <laughs> i believe the end of that story is he did not get accepted into the uh well no because he was a fool because he had his feet because he let his feet stay wet yeah right? well no, he failed the program yeah totally. but he kept his feet kept his feet yeah <laughs> This is a, a little puppy hair. You can see animals also enjoy microcurrent. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, do dogs more than cats, I would say. I would um, say so, yeah. I have, a, I have to trick my cats into treatment, but the cats are so in and out of themselves anyway. They're, but dogs, they're like, oh yeah, please. I mean, look at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> they really enjoy that one. Oh yeah, dogs are fun to treat. We've got some, uh, so, so some of these do get pretty gruesome, guys. Uh, this one is a horse. This was a baby horse. And uh, I, I, there was a fall, and this is a compound fracture. You can see bone in the, in the, in the leg there. And the blue is not me scribbling on it. That was stitches, I think, trying to hold it all together. And in, in seven days, what could have otherwise been considered a fatal injury? Or Well, they did want to put the horse They wanted down, to put the horse they? down. This one was from... Um... Idaho, was yeah, Idaho. Yeah, it's from yeah. Idaho. And you can see that the new tissue replaced that, you know, in seven days to, to turn that into that. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty intense. Um, here we have another person. So this was, you know, we, nursing home falls are unfortunately more common than they should be. And uh, during COVID, you're not allowed to visit in a lot of places. And so in this case, this was a, a, a non-healing wound that was sustained in a nursing home fall. And um, when the gentleman got in there, he was able to treat uh, strictly, essentially through the through the bandages, right? Was he using the yeah, that He used the Chi Wave pad, yeah. Chi Wave pad. Yeah, and um, I think he did get some treatment around it as well. <laughs> and he just followed the wound healing protocol. And, you know, this is it, right? Two and a half weeks turned something that was not healing at all and that they were just slapping band-aids on and some polystorin into a healed leg yeah these are these usually turn out to be pretty drastic cases of uh, ablations mm -hmm. they cut it right off yeah yeah and that was avoided which is amazing yeah. now this next one is not for the faint of heart we won't linger on this too much this is another animal um so this was another frostbite yeah. case so near near christmas pearl got caught in a fence um, and was uh, like caught overnight in a, I think it was a barbed wire fence and uh, contracted frostbite. And this was a, this was a big wound, right? And this is on a horse's body. Another horse to be put down. Yeah. Right. So with no positive prognosis, microcurrent therapy stepped in and this is a longer case than most, but with that kind of wound, I mean, uh, so one month in the infection has cleared up. You can see that looks so much healthier when you, when you look at the, yeah kind of oozing it's not look at that too much um <laughs> so one month in that was that and then the electrodes on each side were, were yeah like so this is not true this was treating with microcurrent right yeah. allowing the electricity to pass through one tool through the wound to the other and then three months later pearl is almost back to normal and this the shrinkage on this wound like how much it's nearly closed up is just phenomenal with how big it was to have a big smalls. job though. It, it was a big job. Mm. And and with a wound that size, yes, the time to heal was longer than some of these other ones. But the fact is that the healing did happen. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the one thing that may have elongated the period of treatment was this is that the horse did get debrided on and off as well. And that would have created more inflammation that needed to be brought down to allow the inflammation to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, to for the body to heal. So we also have some other some other wounds here. So these this is a skin graft, right? Yeah, this this is kind of cool because what happens is this horse jumped on this guy's foot from Missouri. And uh, <laughs> misery. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, what happened is that they needed to take a skin graft from the person's arm, inner arm, to be able to put on the foot. Right. And I think I think they got golden staff on the foot mm -hmm. as well. But this wasn't the healing, and the guy ended up in in uh, Diana's clinic. So Diana wanted, "What the hell do we do with this?" So we, uh, she started treating this person uh, around the wound, mm -hmm. 
with, uh, I think it was blue stem only. Yeah, which is available in every one of our devices, one of right? All of our devices. So uh, if you keep, you keep it going, this was this was totally open. It wasn't healing. Yeah. We started uh, treating. I think it was on the first day. That was second day there. This was second day. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have a third day and fourth day. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this one here, where you're seeing that these are backwards. These are backwards. But this one here, yeah. you can see this was third, right? The one on the right is the third, and the fourth day is the one on the left. And yet, so four days to almost completely regrow okay. yeah. the tissue. Yeah. This this set of images, believe it or not, is in the International Wound Healing Federation's book. book. Wound healing. Right. And well, it's it's very astounding. I mean, that's a very quick turnaround for for wound healing, but with non-infected wounds like that i mean four days to a week yeah well, did the they, same thing they, with the yeah, they, they never seen that so today um stanford um baylor southwest university beyond and beside the international wound healing federation's research project that i participated in all of these uh these wounds is proving that microcurrent is the way to accelerate wound care mm -hmm. So this was actually our introduction into mainstream medicine. Right. So today, mainstream medicine, whether it be, like I said, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency who want to adopt this to increase the speed of healing uh, for their warriors, for, their, right. for their, their military. Yeah, it's got a lot of attention. It's got a lot of attention and uh, it's also being published, I think, in PubMed. And this other one is another, this last one, is another pretty gnarly one, and I believe this was also a fall. Um, this is this is. Oh yeah, this is, yeah, this is Velma. Velma actually had a, had a fall in one of these uh, old age. Another nursing home. Yeah, fall. Nursing home. Is the the black around here? I assume is bruising. Yeah, it's all yeah. bruising and wasn't healing, and uh, so I think the daughter stepped in with one of our devices. Yeah, you can even see that she's yeah. using the device herself. Yeah, yeah. And this yeah. was this was the wounds starting to heal up immediately yeah right and, and, and this if if you didn't have a device like this in a, in one of these homes mm -hmm. what do you do there's nobody there to help them out no not really they cover them up and they hope they'll they just bandage them up. Yeah. yeah and then this you know nice pink healthy, healthy tissue, tissue. Yeah. right and this is kind of at the end here but it's all healed up and to go from that to that yeah, it's something else. Yeah, I mean that really. really I mean, is. every every one of these homes should have this uh, this technology on board. Absolutely, and I think we'll, we want to highlight again what we said at the beginning: the fact that all of this regeneration is possible. Mm -hmm. It shows you that microcurrent can repair. Exactly right. Yeah. It can repair wounds. It can repair other things too. So whatever the damage is, wherever the damage is, we have that ability to get in and repair. And, and we'll highlight these two guys here, right? Self-treatment done right. So our product line, the Abazia Life product line, um, was designed to offer proven therapy in an easy to deliver way with little to no guesswork. So each of the two models has different features and we're gonna kind of cover those briefly now, okay? So the Genesis, this is our entry level device. This is the one this webinar was all about. And this starts at $600. Let's be upfront with you about that there. It's never been easier and more efficient to treat with microcurrent. One in every home, right? One yeah. in every home, yeah. <laughs> so you can, you can address chronic pain with this. You can reduce inflammation. Obviously, those are intertwined. You know that now. Uh, you can treat scar tissue. You can do muscle re-education. It has biofeedback. You can stimulate the soft tissue to enhance the ability to heal. And remember, we mentioned blue stimulate. Well, that's in there for that. And it has automatic treatment. So not only do you, can you get an affordable microcurrent machine, but you can get a machine that will treat you without you having to know what you're doing. You just slap it on, you set it to auto treat, and it will treat your scar tissue. It will deal with inflammation and it will trigger the regeneration as well. Does it all for you, easy. Now, you, that doesn't mean that you can't take it off of autopilot and, and go, and, and go in. I mean, obviously for yeah. scar tissue, which you'd be able to treat, you'll want to spend more time dealing with the scar tissue. And the scar tissue mode also doubles as a great soft tissue mode to enable you to pretty much complete any of the 220 pages of condition-based yeah. protocols that we have as well. Um, now the evolution, it has some more features in it. 
right? So now this says resolve pain. Both devices have the capability of resolving pain. She said we've had it by the feedback. Yeah. Um, to it. Yeah. The alpha, the um, base nerve stimulation, yes. the gamma. Um, yeah. Extremely important as well as the RSI. Yeah. This one also, it mentions stimulating acupuncture points, but again, we could do that with, yeah. with, either, with either device. Um, immune enhancement here, uh, this device does have 60 hertz, which is what we typically use for immune enhancement. Um, but that's more about the biofeedback, isn't it, to do the long bones than it is the frequency. It is, yeah. We, yeah. we can do it on either device, really. Right. So that's, that's great. So your, your key benefits you get here are your, your gamma for your brain. You get your sleep and stress reduction and your vagus nerve stimulation. Those are the real things. And the ability and the fMRI size, you say, like, you know, I love that mode. Whatever device you get, though, you get training and support. So you, you, we could give you a car, but if you don't know how to drive, then it's just going to sit in your driveway, right? With your device purchase, you get a paperback and electronic manual for your device. Now, these manuals are very detailed, basic information, how to use them, as well as uh, the trigger point charts. So you'll be able to run through those. You also get 60 days access to the online training library, uh, which has over 200 training videos for specific conditions and getting started. And you get access to your own treatment coordinator. So the treatment coordinators. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a fairly new addition, but the treatment coordinators allow you to um, essentially not need any training ever. They'll reach out from you within, to you within a day of you purchasing and get you set up with the training. So you get the online training and get a case history from you if you want to use them. They can then use that case history to develop a private protocol for you or for your family members or whoever it is. And this is at no additional cost to you. It comes with the purchase of the device. So you'll never be asked to pay for these consultations with the coordinator. You'll be able to reach them whenever you need and get that information. So that is super, super important. In 20 years that Lori and I have been working in this field, now, one of the most important, I think the most important uh, of it all has always been the training yeah. and the support. And uh, so we've, we've done our best, but now I think that we've got it all, all kind of automated. Stepped up even more. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nobody does this. No. And we got to say as well, like we are, for whatever that means to you as an individual, we have the approvals around the world. So we're able to, the device is legally available around the world. And more importantly, well, not more importantly, but it's also, as we've mentioned before, government recognized technology. So the government is able to buy these for its clinics and for um, really any the purpose, VA, right? The Veterans Administration now uh, are totally, um, it's on the, their paperwork, one of the VA hospital things in Washington or somewhere are buying these and we're, we're wanting more and more representation to help us out. Right. And then, of course, we offer a 30-day guarantee. So all of our Vazia devices can be returned within 30 days of you receiving it. There's a 15% restocking fee there. And it is within you receiving it. We're not going to make you uh, let's say, well, it's from date of purchase. And because of COVID, it took seven days for you to get it. So you're out seven days there. <laughs> OK. And lastly, so how do you get these products? So we have our two devices here. We have kit versions. The, the deluxe kits that are $7.95 for the Genesis deluxe kit and $19.95 for the Evolution deluxe kit. Oh, you get the magic wand. You get the magic wand with the deluxe <laughs> kits for sure. Okay. Um, you can order these with the link here, that the santashop.com slash HP, which is hash a protocol. You can also just go to the santashop.com and browse. You'll be able to find the products on there too. There are smaller versions, as I said. So the Genesis um, small kit is $600 and the Evolution one is $1,500. So you can get those features there however you want. Um, I mean, personally, I find that you, we look at the Genesis and we say, well, that device is great for people if they need that entry level affordable machine. When it comes to all the bells and whistles, being able to essentially do anything, the Evolution is going to serve you better. You see the attachment variation is very big uh, with the Evolution Deluxe Kit having a lot more in it. But a lot of that is because those tools wouldn't really apply to the Genesis. You don't have the brain program, so you don't need the ear clips or the vagus nerve pad or the trigeminal pads for treating your above your eyebrows. 
So it's, it's what do you need to be able to optimally use the equipment? You can go to the center shop after and, and order any bits and pieces that you want yeah. to add. Yeah, you can always add stuff on later on as well. Um, and, and that's just the, the, the way it's set up. Any accessory that we sell on our store will plug into these devices. So if it's there, you'd be able to use it on your device. So I know that we do have questions here. Now I'm just gonna check the chat because Okay, so we've got some questions in the chat. I'm gonna kind of cover those and then we will cover the questions in the Q&A box, okay? Uh, okay, so the first question here is, is there any research on the effects of microcurrent devices on ankylosing spondylitis, which I have, and also on multiple sclerosis, which my best friend has? Okay, <clears throat> there's, no, there's no actual research out there, no papers that have been written. Okay. But we have treated ankylosing spondylitis, uh, yes, very, very, very successfully. successfully. Uh, MS uh, is, another, is another situation, it's an autoimmune disease again. We're talking, there's so, many, there's so much speculation has been around MS and its treatment. Um, we, we have treatment We have protocols. had cases. Yeah. Um, and we can help them very much. I mean, we can't actually get rid of the MS, but we can help them live a, a more easier life, dignified yeah, life. Definitely. And uh, there are um, there are different uh, substances out there, like the mm -hmm. like uh, that peptide that are able to, mm -hmm. to turn things around for a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But there's no actual cure. I can't say curative. No. I would say maybe uh, a lot of support. It's a support system. Right. Yeah. Uh, the next question, I might be able to answer this one. I purchased the unit, however, have not taken the training yet. Will the training be enough for me to learn, know how to use the unit at its full potential? Also, do you have a booklet to follow with a full explanation on how to use the unit for different purposes? So yeah, so there is a booklet in, um, included in the kits. So if you purchase one, you hopefully you have that booklet. If, if it was somehow missed, then do let us know. Um, the booklet looks like, let's see if I have one here. Uh -huh. Depending on which device you got, it's a small booklet like this. It's got a picture on the front. So it's your, it's your normal novel size instead of, um, instead of like a little tiny paper booklet. You'll be able to use that. The video training will help you as well. And you should have been given access to that by a treatment coordinator. Yeah, so there's the evolution one. And then current medicine is a bigger book. So you can see it's much bigger. This contains protocols to follow for loads of different conditions and with loads of treatment areas that you'd be able to to work on so you can use that as well with your device so yes in, in essence the training and that stuff should be enough for you to be able to use your device um, we got another question here can you treat deep venous thrombosis and the resulting damage to the valves in the vein that results in swelling of the legs absolutely i think it's possibly one of the only ways of treating it yeah yeah. As I've seen deep vein thrombosis, sometimes people, you know, on airplanes, whatever it is, whether it's from the neck movement, right. and there's damages done to the valves that support the blood on the way back. And this, this is possibly one of the only ways of being able to, to treat it um, successfully. Right. Would both devices treat it then? Um, I'd, I'd like to see some, you know, deep vein thrombosis is pretty, pretty bad, bad stuff. I would say I would go with the vaso. You know, the same treatment yeah. that, that I did on that fellow with the right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's really more the professional device. Yeah, yeah. which which you can find on our store as the Pro Sport Three. Um, we haven't featured it here because this is more of a of a home device. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Webinar. Yeah. Would fMRSI substitute close to? Not not quite. No, the the vaso was developed actually for uh, uh, for horses, for horses legs. It tightens yeah. up, doesn't it? Tightens up as well as yeah. So and and uh, um, what vaso was designed for was actually impregnation. It, it gets blood in and gets right into the whole system. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the damage is done with deep vein thrombosis. We need to create new blood vessels as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, angiogenesis is the capability of the vaso program. Yeah. Right. Another question is, uh, what program did you use for the burn victims? That would be the arc welder. Was it a 77? Mod, no, there's modulate. Three to one. Um, yeah, the arc welder. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was a Q, a seven, three to one. Yeah, so Q3 to one, which is 121 available yeah. in all the devices. Yeah. Um, okay, so regarding the life evolution for regenerating damaged joints, could it help in joint conditions where it is bone to bone? 
where cartilage is gone. As one client said to me, uh, that's what his doctor had told him and there is nothing much the doctor can do for him. Well, the once you get rid of, there two, there's several things. Number one, scar tissue. Number two is getting synovial fluid back into that area. What do you call it? Bone on bone? Mm -hmm. So once we get the synovial fluid back in, it kind of separates it's cushions, in, it cushions in the area. But the only reason why synovial fluid stops being produced is because of inflammation. Mm -hmm. So scar tissue, inflammation, and blood flow. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so the warranty on the devices, we got a three year warranty, um, after which I believe repairs for these two devices are between 129 and 195, depending on what you did to it. And, uh, for the pro, I think it's, it's 295 for the repairs. Mm -hmm. Three, yeah, 295 or yeah. 300. So, so three years is, is pretty much unheard of in, in these sorts of devices. And, uh, they're very, very proud of that warranty. Uh, being able to send it back and send it within the U.S. for repair as well. So you're not sending yeah. it off to Thailand to get repaired. Uh, yeah. Um, so you get that pretty quick turnaround on that, which is great. Um, so yeah. I, so regarding treatment coordinators, can we ask them questions in treating our client's condition? I don't see why not. If they can help, then they can help. So that's totally fine. Um, yeah. Can you provide feedback on the introduction of scalar wave technology? Oh, we didn't even talk about scalar wave in here. Yeah, I've got a book. Yeah. Yeah, we got, we got a book. <laughs> book. Um, we won't get in. So we, we shouldn't really cover scalar waves could probably be its own webinar, to be honest. Um, but in essence, scalar waves, um, they, they're, you, there is a device, the scalar chi, which you can plug into the evolution or the pro and be able to use um, scalar. Um, and the evolution, you can use it for sure because yeah. but the seven to twelve. I like scalar is around seven hertz, and mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of reasons why I've chosen seven hertz for that. Yeah. So the genesis is not really something that you should be you with the use. scale. No, I wouldn't no. think so. Um, have you had any experience with acoustic neuroma? Um, I think I think we I think we have, but it's so limited. A lot of times when when people have a, a problem, whether it be hearing, they, they'll go in and they'll see a specialist and mm -hmm. the specialist kind of controls everything mm -hmm. from then on. Right. Um, so no, I have, it, it has to do with the nerve and it has to do with the cranial nerve set. So I would go with tongue stimulation. On Which it. would be evolution, evolution. not yeah. genesis. Yeah. Um, so, would the Genesis treat trigeminal nerve pain in the jaw? I don't yeah. see why not. You got you got dosing and zeroing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So absolutely, we'd use the six points protocol for that. Um, okay. I'm very sensitive to EMS. Does the evolution have to be connected to a laptop or cell phone or other Wi-Fi device? Does it emit EMS and does it have to communicate by Wi-Fi with the device? You're in luck. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be plugged into a computer or a laptop. The devices are completely stand, standard, handheld. You use two. two AA batteries to power them, so you don't even plug them into a wall to recharge. Um, it doesn't emit an EMF by itself. You can get a PEMF attachment to allow it to, com to emit EMFs um, for like a positive, healthy ones. Uh, but no, it, and it doesn't require a Wi-Fi connection, mm -mm. nothing. Completely, you know, standalone, you can use it as is. Yeah, probably want to look at our flow. And yeah, and then we do have products to help against EMFs as well. But for when it comes to the device, you're totally fine. Yeah. You won't have any problems with that. Um, how would you treat scar tissue within the spinal canal from cervical and lumbar fusion? Oh, boy. Um, I, I go, you know, you, you, you can treat the over the spine itself directly. Right. Right. And you can do it in 77, which is the anti scar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then lastly, in this section of questions, then we'll move on to the Q&A. And guys, in it, for the rest of it, if you have more questions, please drop them in the Q&A box. You can click that on Zoom and you can add them there. Um, that way we don't have to come back to the chat. So are treatment protocols for MS included in the manual for the treatment of MS, um, HUG, for instance, MS fatigue, et cetera? Okay, so no, they're not, but your treatment coordinator will be able to set you up with private protocols. 
That's the whole point of that. Yeah. So you would have no problem in getting the protocols. They just wouldn't be in the manual off the bat, but you, you can email or call your treatment coordinator and, and, and have that all set up. Um, and last one on here with the grounding protocol, can you use your cell phone or iPad for reading? Yeah, you could, you could, you could be doing grounding and, and be using electronics at the same time. No problem. So before we get into the Q and a questions, uh, which may be some overlapping, I want to do some drawing. We, we shared that we were going to be giving away some of Aussie life Genesis oh, we devices. Are. We are, we're giving <laughs> we away, we're giving away <laughs> yeah. three, oh my three God. classic kits, which doesn't come with the Y probe, but three, three. Yeah, I know. I'm insane, aren't I? Oh boy, I'm gonna talk to you <laughs> behind the woods. <laughs> so everyone that attended got entered in to be able to um, get one of these. I'm gonna be was gonna be completely random. We're gonna draw it through a random number generator. And uh, other than that, everyone that mentioned who referred them, that person that you mentioned also got another entry. No one can win more than one prize. So if you are like a few people and you have about seven people in here, you can only win once. So it's not gonna be super unfair. So the first number, which we will generate now, is 121. So the next number is 14. And the next number, the final number is 34. And this was out of 192 uh, potential numbers. So I can pull up the names and we can let people know live who won. So, you know, we're not cheating here. 121. 121 goes to Dennis Hannon. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations, Dennis. Dennis. Mm -hmm. 14 goes to Carl Kostenbader. Oh, how do I spell that? Uh, K-O-S-T-E-N-B-A-D-E-R. So if you've won one of these, you'll be, we'll reach out to you by your email that was provided to get where you want it shipped. Because it may be that you already have a device and you want it shipped to a friend or a family member as well. And number 34 is Ernest Rosenberg. So congratulations, guys. And thanks for being a part of that. Hopefully you'll be able to find some good use for the um, for the Genesis devices that you'll be getting. Just to make sure here. Okay, good. No one else talked in chat, guys. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we'll be able to use the Q&A here. So we've already answered Ben. Oh, someone else talked in chat. Ah, they're just enjoying the webinar. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, so Heather... Okay, so Heather is saying, it's, this seems to be helping me with my fibromyalgia. How often should I use the microcurrent? So... Whenever, well, you know, I think I think that every second day or whenever the pain um, goes back up to a level that's uncomfortable for you, the injury, right? Until you pro, until you you reprogram your whole central nervous system. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you want to keep going, and is there that we talk about there being such a thing as over treating? So we don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to over treat. One of the things uh, when that happens when you treat often is that you get a whole lot of toxin uh, load that goes to your liver and to your lymph. And it's almost like a retox. So you want to be able to, uh, unless you, there is a protocol actually that, that increases the speed of detox through the device. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying, I think we call it elimination assistance. It, so you have access to the videos, you'll be able to look that one up in there. And that's to, to help you process the, the yeah, junk. Because your liver is probably already bogged down. Yeah. And if you're bogging it, if you, you're delivering more toxins to your liver, you just, you just get an overload. Right. And yeah. your kidneys. And you just need to drink a lot of fluids as well. And it as well, yeah. 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 Okay, so that's pretty good. Nice. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I have a surgical scar on my abdomen, which I have repeat, treated repeatedly with the Avazia Blue, but it is still there. So, yeah, but surgical the... scar scarring is still seventy-seven. Yeah, so I mean, if if it's not just because it's still there, it doesn't mean that it's not neutralized, well, right? There's a yeah, lot that goes yeah. into actually the electrical buildup. Yeah, one which blocks information flow. I mean, we, that's the first. That's the number one priority. Number two. Yeah 
is going to be uh, the emotional connection to that scar. Number three is going to be the vanity side. Yeah. And okay. if the scar's still there, it doesn't mean it hasn't been cleared because no. they don't all. Yeah, they don't so always. Now they've only got the vanity side to deal with, mm. uh, which still is. is but still the blue dealing. has which? Yeah. The blue does have that. It would be, it should be fine to be able to yeah. do, do scarring. So you yeah. just have to keep at it for the vanity side because it does take a while. Uh, can you use it on a keloid? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So you can use it on a keloid. And I believe that the evolution also has a specific program, the more intense 350 for keloids as well, right? Yeah, three, I was looking for it in my mind. 350. It's 350 yeah, because it's soft. You can soften it. <laughs> I think yeah. if you yeah. only had the Genesis and you were working it, you probably would be able to start you softening time, it. Yeah. 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 But you get that quick yeah. flattening with the 350. Uh, so. Great. And uh, the next question here. If, so in, in essence, can you treat metal if they have metal in their body? Yes. yes. No, no yeah. So scarring and everything can be still treated in the it's same. It's not electronic. Yeah. Intervention. Okay. What about using this device with a pacemaker? So not directly on any pacemaker. Um, away from it is fine. Yeah, away from it. We can, if you have a problem, we can look at meridians. Yeah. Stimulation points on meridians are all as far away from the main organ. Yeah. So we can do that. Yeah. So absolutely, you can you can use it with a pacemaker, but you shouldn't go over the pacemaker with the device, right? Yeah. And what about so if if I needed my back treated and I had a pacemaker, would it be safe to treat the back, or is that it should not pose any kind of problem. it shouldn't pose any kind of problem? Okay. Perfect. Good question. Uh, can the devices be used on a nine-month-old baby who has rough skin on the face, which is spreading to the arms and legs? I'll let, I'll let mommy answer that one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No problems whatsoever. Okay, perfect. We already answered the question about does the evolution need to be connected with a laptop? So, yeah, so is there any provision here? So Paul's saying there's a lot of info in this webinar. Is there any provision that will permit us to download it for review again and again? Yep. Uh, we're going to send it out to everyone as a replay, but we will also uh, upload it to YouTube where it will hopefully stand forever and not get banned by YouTube. Um, and if it does, we'll find a different place to host it so that it is available for people to view again and again. Yeah, it might have to be Vimeo. Uh, can you treat forward angle glaucoma with a ProSport 2? I don't know enough of the ProSport 2s. Alan, what are you doing with all of them? ProSport 2. I <laughs> that when you had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what program. I talked about We'd have to look it up because the ProSport 2 does have a lot less than the ProSport mm -hmm. 3, so we'd have to check that one. But glaucoma is usually treated by little wings, isn't it? And so that should be in the 2. It should be able that to should do be that. in the 2. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alan could just contact us. Yeah, yeah, just, just let us know. There, yeah. <laughs> Using any of these devices, should we see results from anxiety within one week, three weeks, six weeks? Um, I think I think almost from the get go, because anxiety, stress, all of these, uh, which are beta programs, if we can get you into an alpha and get you start getting some sleep. Yeah, you may need to stay on the Eclipse for a bit, or maybe Vegas another a little longer than the three minutes. Yeah, it's but... it's. it's it's a reprogramming process. Yeah. Because your brain, for some reason, has decided that beta is where you want to be. But if you can get in there, then, you know, you, you should be starting to see some results relatively quickly for sure. Um, we will, as I mentioned, the question is, where can I get a replay of this? Uh, there will be a replay posted all over the place um, and emailed to you as you are attending here as well. Can... ECT use, be used to treat Peyronie's disease? Uh, yeah, it's probably one of the only treatments actually because it is scar tissue. Mm -hmm. So you can you can paint directly over the area with blue with a 77 hertz in both I, devices, right? I would, but I don't have that problem. So if you've got, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you've got a wounded um, Client, um, so client sawed his hand off that was reattached two days later. Yeah. Um, can you, you would just use the scar inflammation of vaso, your typical. Yeah, yeah work at both hands. Yeah, both hands as well. Work on a good hand as, as much as the bad, so that you don't have this phantom pain that's in. Yeah. I don't believe the devices have an effect on heavy metals, do they? No, not a negative one. Yeah, okay. 
Um, can you use Eclipse with the Genesis? It doesn't really have the right programs to bother. You want alpha and the Genesis does not include alpha frequencies. So you wouldn't be able to make the best use out of them. Yeah. Um, I've seen people buy the ear clips for them, maybe for ear pain or pain on areas they just want to clip them to. With, will the Avazia Life treat a dog with epilepsy or Cushing's disease? Epilepsy, that's a difficult one, isn't it? My dog. Yeah. Well, epilepsy, I think when we treat epilepsy, sometimes we trigger seizures, right? Mm -hmm. And but then this, usually the seizures don't come back afterwards. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a completely left and right hemispheres. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I wouldn't personally, I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, we do not have an answer for that question at this time. Um, mostly because of the epilepsy for the most part that we can treat animals with many other yeah. conditions for sure um can the genesis be used for spinal stenosis yeah definitely yeah and uh can you use 77 for scars on the scalp because it's on the head thing. yes you can and our last question do the pemf waves come out of all sides of the pads so out of the chi wave we have a little video on that. Okay. We we do. So both both of the of the wide sides they come out with twelve inches, and then they come out like an inch around the rest of the pad as well. Yeah. So you sort of get like a little sphere around the pad if you were to hold it in the middle, where it gives you that that energy from. Okay, so we are pretty much out of questions. I will check the chat, but I I wanted to keep this short enough that people won't get bogged down in the replay for sure. So. If someone buys one of these units, then decides they want a higher price unit, what kind of trade-in is available? So we have very effective trade-in programs for all of them. They would be able to get um, a good credit on everything there. And uh, lastly, will there be an email link to watch the Zoom Instant Replay? Yes, there will. So thank you for, for joining us, everyone. We really appreciate it. And uh, we will send out the replay shortly. Uh, so I hope you all have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Take bye -bye. care. Bye-bye. Nice seeing you all.